Hello and welcome to our physics class today. Today's topic is electromagnetic spectrum and taking you through is Vincent Jerome. So first, first thing we're going to begin with defining what's an electromagnetic wave. So an electromagnetic electromagnetic waves. So electromagnetic waves are transient waves which result from oscillating electrical and magnetic fields which are at right angles to each other. So that brings me to the next question. What are transverse waves? So I don't know if you can recall from waves one the topic that you did back in form two that we defined as transverse waves as waves who form crests and troughs. If I can just draw a model here. So whenever you see a wave travel for a transverse wave, it's going to look like something of this sort. You have a crest, then you have a trough. You have a crest, then you have a trough. And this is the direction of the wave travel. Which gives me the other one, which one, the, the other definition whereby the particle vibrates perpendicular to the wave travel. Okay, so as you've seen, the electromagnetic waves, they result from oscillating electrical and magnetic fields. However, they are of different kinds. They are of different kinds. And the ones that are known to us are the ones that our eyes can see. Maybe that's the visible light, which has the seven colors of the spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. However, there are some other forms of light that are not known to us. Man, since we can't detect them using our naked eyes, that's why we need other equipment and other gadgets like the spectrometer to detect them. A good example, if I just give you an example, whenever you sit outside in the sun, you can feel the heat on your skin, but you can't see the heat that's reaching your skin. That heat is a form of infrared, which is not visible to the human eye, but it's visible to other animals. Other animals can see them. Also another good example, how do astrologists find out what's happening out there in space, yet the light cannot reach us. So a good example of how electromagnetic waves apply is, let's say for example there's a supernova when a star dies, it unleashes these gamma rays this infrared which then is detected by satellites which revolve the earth and then the satellites after detection now translate the information and give the information to the scientists okay so as i stated earlier we have different forms of electromagnetic waves if i can just list them down so we have the radio waves we have the microwaves, we have the infrared, the visible light, which consists of the seven colors of the spectrum, the ultraviolet, X-rays, and the gamma rays. However, if you arrange the electromagnetic waves in terms of in either increasing frequency or increasing wavelength, you form something we call the electromagnetic spectrum. So, in short, the electromagnetic spectrum is an arrangement of electromagnetic waves in order of increasing frequency or increasing wavelength. I know you may be asking yourself right now, how will you be able to, make, to recall all this? All this? I think I'm just going to give you a mnemonic here. So that you can use it to recall the different types of electromagnetic waves that we have. So, for radio waves, we are going to use rho step. For microwaves, we are going to say maze. For infrared, I'm going to say is for visible light 
you can say very. For ultraviolet, unusual x ray, we'll say Xmas. And then for gamma rays, we're going to say gift. So in short, if you want to recall the different types of electromagnetic waves that we have without much strain or strain, you can just say roasted maize is very unusual Christmas gift. Roasted maize is very unusual Christmas gift. Roasted maize is very unusual Christmas gift. So the R represents the radio waves, microwaves, is infrared, very visible light. Unusual ultraviolet, excellent X rays, and gift memories. So remember, roasted maize is very unusual Christmas gift. Okay. So as we have stated earlier, we said that um, the electromagnetic spectrum is a um, combination of the electromagnetic waves in with respect to increasing frequency or increasing wavelength. So what I'm just going to do, I'll show you what happens when you have increasing frequency and increasing wavelength with the electromagnetic waves. So the first electromagnetic wave with the highest wavelength, with the highest wavelength, the largest one is radio waves, radio waves, followed by microwaves which has a wavelength of from times 10 to a negative 5 to 10 to 0 which is just 1 meter then we have the infrared then followed by visible light also violet light x-rays and gamma rays if you can just recall that roasted maize is very unusual Xmas gift you can see that we have Radio wave, microwave, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X rays, and gamma rays. So, as we move on from radio waves to gamma rays, the frequency increases. An increase in frequency also causes a very, very high increase in energy. Then, if you can just Take a look, if you're moving from gamma rays, moving on to radio rays, there's an increase in wavelength. If you can just look at this diagram, the wavelength is the distance from here to here. And the frequency is the number of complete cycles per second. So, you can see the wavelength is, de is decreasing. The distance from here to here is much bigger than the distance from here to here. The distance from here to here is much bigger than the distance from here to here and, and so on and so forth as you progress and you can also note that the number of cycles that are present in this box are fewer than the ones that are present here and as you gradually move to the right you see that the number of cycles are continually increasing that means the frequency is also increasing as you can remember frequency is the number of complete oscillations made by a wave per unit second, per unit time rather than second. So, having said that, these different types of electromagnetic waves travel through space at the same velocity as light. But, the most important thing you must note here is that the same way we have a spectrum for visible light is the same way we have the larger spectrum where the light is a part of and that includes the infrared microwaves and radio waves. Then, you can note that from as you, as you move from gamma rays, moving on to radio waves, there's a decrease, there's a decrease in frequency. However, if you, give, if you were to give the radio waves a color, probably if you use a detector, you'll notice that the radio waves are red. There's a red sheet whenever we have a um, larger wavelength and less energy. And as you move on, if, you, if you maybe you were to use a detector to take a look at the different colors, you notice that the gamma rays are almost bluish in color. 
This can be illustrated by the spectrum. As you can see, we have the red color, which is the color having the largest wavelength, and we have the violet color, which has the least wavelength but the highest frequency and the highest energy. So that's the same thing that happens in the universe. So if we have an electromagnetic wave having the highest wavelength, it's probably going to be red in color, or it's going to experience what we call a red shift. And then the gamma rays having the highest amount of energy is going to experience what we call a blue shift. Okay. Now let's head on to the different properties of electromagnetic waves. Different properties of electromagnetic waves. The first, the first, the first, so the first property of electromagnetic waves is they travel through space at the velocity of light, which is 3 times 10 power, and then I decide that 3 times 10 power 8 meters per second. So they travel through space with the speed of light at 3 times 10 power 8 meters per second. If you can remember what I said, light it's just a part of the great electromagnetic spectrum which share common properties. So it's not any for us to see that they travel, they share a common velocity through space. So the first one, they travel through space with the speed of light. The second one, they do not require a material medium for transmission. Unlike the mechanical waves which require a material medium for transmission, electromagnetic waves can pass through a vacuum. A vacuum is, you can call it a space that does not contain matter, any form of matter. So these waves can pass through a vacuum, a space that does not contain matter. So they do not need matter to be transmitted from one point to another. Just as the light travels through from the sun towards the infrared, the ultraviolet, they do not require a material medium for transmission for them to reach it. The other one, the other property is that they are transverse waves in nature. So, what are transverse waves? Transverse waves are waves whose particles vibrate perpendicular to the wave travel or are transmitted through a series of crests and troughs alternating. So, all these electromagnetic waves are transmitted through a series of crests and troughs alternating and their particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of the wave travel as I told earlier. The next one is that they undergo interference and interference, I think you know what interference means. So interference is what happens when two waves superpose on each other resulting to the formation of a much more greater wave, a much more um, smaller wave or an equal wave in amplitude and frequency. They also undergo reflection, which is the bouncing back of waves. Also, they undergo diffraction, whereby if you expose these electromagnetic waves through um, an obstacle, if, if you put an obstacle in front of these waves, you'll observe that they're going to be changed. For example, I can just show you a bit of distract, diffraction. Let's say they were there, you're going to notice some changes. Maybe something of the sort might happen. If you can remember, this is what we refer to as diffraction. And then also you can say, you can also say that. Um, Diffraction, I can give you an example. Um, if you can take a look at a river flowing, you notice that when the water reaches an obstacle or a stone, it does not flow through the stone. It can be anders on the other side of the stone. That's what we refer to a diffraction. Then they also undergo diffraction. Diffraction. Diffraction is the changing of velocity of a wave when it moves from a different medium of a higher density to a medium of lower density and also they undergo polarization. The polarization effect is the splitting of lights into 
several into seven colors of the spectrum. Yeah. So if you just take these different forms of electromagnetic waves, you can be able to split them into the different colors of the spectrum. Why is this so? Remember that visible light, okay, radio waves, it's just visible light, but it's just that it has a much more um, larger wavelength. So if you can manage to decrease the wavelength of the radio waves and increase the frequency, you can be able to get visible light, which then is splitable to the seven colors of the spectrum. The other thing, they also possess energies in different amounts. A theory to the Planck's equation, whereby energy is given by the Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. So, um, if you can just derive from it. So, energy is equal to HF, which means energy is directly proportional to the frequency because the Planck's constant is a constant that does not change. So, if I increase my frequency, then that means my energy also is going to increase. If I decrease my frequency, that means my energy is also going to decrease. So, if, let's say, let's use this one. Here, this is the frequency, if I can just take a look at this one. E is equal to HF. So the energy in radio waves is much less than the energy in gamma rays. I think that's why <coughs> it's explainable to why gamma rays have high penetration power than radio waves or why X-rays have a high penetration power than microwaves. It's because of this relationship here between the energy and the frequency of the electromagnetic waves. Then the last thing, the last property is that they carry no charge and are hence neither deflected by electric fields or magnetic fields. So, if I can just... Let's say I had a, a plate which is positively charged and I have another one which is negatively charged and I have an electromagnetic wave that was I just used an EM for meaning an electromagnetic wave which was flowing between the plates this one was positive and this one was negative the waves are going to pass on and deviated they are neither going to be deflected towards the positive plate nor the negative plate however, what's going to happen the bulb won't bend it will just continue as it goes from the original source. Um, from this, I think we can be able to see that these different types of electromagnetic waves, due to their different properties, might possess different forms of applications in our day-to-day -day lives. And with that, I'd actually like us to take a look at some of the numerical calculations you might come across when you're dealing with questions of such nature. So, on to example number one. Green light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to power negative 7 meters. Calculate the energy it emits. Green light has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to power negative 7 meters. Calculate the energy it emits. So, with this you can say V is equals to F lambda. But then, remember, green light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Therefore, the value of V is equals to C, which is the constant that represents the velocity of light, which is equals to 3 times 10 power negative 8 meters per second. And then you have the wavelength that's 5 times 10 to negative 7. I think with this we can find the frequency. Therefore, we can say V, which is 3 times 10 to negative 8, equals to F, which we don't have, F multiplied by 5 times 
10, 1 equity, 7. So if we just want to go away this, I divide both sides by 5 times 10 to 1 negative 7. Here, then here I also divide by 5 times 10 to 1 negative 7, which cancels this out. Then remember you're dealing with these ones. You can just take this one up. It becomes a positive. So it becomes 3 times 10 to 8 times 10 to 7 along 5 is equals to f. So you just do that using the calculator. So you just keep 3 times 10 power 8 times 10 power 7. You get your answer, then you divide your answer by 5. You get your answer as 6 times 10 power 14. So the frequency is equal to 6 times 10 power 14. However, remember from the Planck's equation whereby energy is equal to the Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency, we have the energies, the Planck's constant, which is 6 times, which is I just the Planck's constant which is 6.63 times 10 power negative 34. Then we multiply by our frequency 6 times 10 power 14. There's one thing I want you to note here that the Planck's constant does not change. It's always the same. The Planck's constant does not change. It's always the same. Okay, so With that and this one thing you can remember that the value of h you always given the value of h whenever you're calculating so you don't have to cram it you can just look at the question they're going to give you the value of h the value of h rather which is normally roughly something 6.63 .6 times 10 power negative 34 so you can just calculate that 6.63 times 10 power negative 10 power negative 34 times 6 times 10 power 14 which gives me 3.978 times 10 power negative 19 so this is 3.978 times 10 Power negative 19. Jones. And remember that we've written J for Jones because Jones are the SI unit for energy. Jones are the SI unit for energy. Okay. So we begin to take a look at that. So the first process we had to find the frequency, which we used the formula V is equal to F lambda. Then we found our frequency as 6 times 10 power 14. Then we applied the formula energy is equal to F times the Planck's constant, which gave us 6.63 times 10 power negative 34, which is the Planck's constant, multiplied by the value which we got up here. 6 times 10 power 14, which gave us 3.978 times 10 power negative 19. Okay, so if we just move on to this, but remember for all for all your applications, we're going to use the value of H. I don't even know going to use the value of that, but we're going to use the value of h as 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 because this is a universally accepted constant and it's not just given there, it's experimentally proven that it's actually 6.63 times 10 power negative 8 joules second. So a radio station is transmitting at a frequency of 
So our energy here is going. So our energy here is going to be given by the formula A is equals to KHF, and we already have um, this. But then this is not the value of F. So for us to find the value of F, we need to use the formula V is equals to F lambda. So V equals to F lambda for us to find the value of F. But then F is equals to V over lambda, where V is the velocity of light in air. So which gives us the velocity of light in air is 3 times 10 to 1 negative 8 times 10 to 1 positive 8, sorry rather, divided by the wavelength which is given as 5 times 10 to 1 negative 7. If I can just keep this in the calculator. So the first step you do 3 times 10. Whenever you want to put the power, you just press this. The one that looks like it's a triangle without a base, this bit. 10 to 8 divided by 5 times 10 power negative 7. You'll get your answers 6 times 10 power 14. 6 times 10 power 14. So our frequency is 6 times 10 power 14 hertz. But then remember, we were supposed to find the energy the energy that the green light emits. So, using the Planck's equation, E is equals to HF, where H is the value of the Planck's constant given here. We're going to find that our energy is equals to 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 times the value of the frequency here. 6 times 10 14. So, you can just do this to make it simpler. You can just multiply this and this. So, we have 6.63 times 6 times 10. But then remember, whenever you, you multiply the numbers up in the same base, you just add the powers on top. So, negative 34 plus 14, that's negative 20. So, times 10. Or negative 20 so that you can make your work a little bit easier so you just key that into the calculator it's going to give you 6.63 times 6 times 10 power negative 20 which gives us 3.978 times 10 power negative 19 so the energy here is 3.978 times 10 to a negative 19 joules. That's the energy that the green light emits. Okay, if I can just take you through the question again. So the question was asking about the energy and they are not giving you the velocity of the green light. So that's one thing you're supposed to remember. that. These constants are normally provided in your question, so you don't need to cram them. Okay, so the first step we needed to find the frequency, and the frequency from the formula V is equal to F lambda, we found our frequency is 6 times 10 power 14 hertz. Then we needed to use this frequency here and substitute it here to find the energy, whereas they're given us the value of H, and that's what we did, and we found our final answer coming to 3.978 times 10 power negative 19 joules. If I can just carry on with a certain example, a radio station is transmitting at a frequency of 15.42 megahertz. So the frequency is 15.42 megahertz. Calculate the wavelength of transmission. So they want us to find the wavelength of transmission. But then, 
Remember that you said that electromagnetic waves travel at the velocity of light. Therefore, the value of V or C is equal to 3 times 10 power 8 meters per second. However, you need to understand what megahertz means. So, 1 megahertz is equal to 1 times 10 power 6 hertz or 1 megahertz is equal to a million hertz 1 megahertz is equal to a million hertz or 1 megahertz is equal to 1 times 10 power 6 hertz so if we can just change that the megahertz into hertz what about 15.42 megahertz so you just press multiply, you find 15.42, sorry, 0 0.42 times 1 times 10 power 6. So you can just key that into your calculator. So 15.42 times 1 times 10 power 6. You find your answers. So we just fix that. Hmm? Just fix that to four significant figures. Gives you 1.542 times 10 power 7. Gives us 1.542 times 10. Seven hertz. Okay. Now from the formula V equals to F lambda, we can be able to find that if you make lambda the subject of the formula, lambda is equals to the velocity divided by the frequency, which is given by three times ten power eight divided by 1.542 times 10 power 7. If we just keep that into your calculator. So 3 times 10 power 8 divided by 1.542 times 10 power 7 gives us 19.455 and this is equal to 19.455 but then writing our answer to four significant figures leaves me rounding this off so actually we're not rounding off carrying one here so it's going to give us 19.46 and they were asking about the wavelength so it's 19.46 so it is 19.46 meters. So, in this question, there's one thing I'd like to emphasize. The first thing, make sure that you're working with units when they're in their SI unit form, not converted to much more larger units or much more smaller units. Then the other thing, make sure that you remember that the speed of an electromagnetic wave through space or in a vacuum is equal to the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 power 8. So, when we converted our frequency into normal units to hertz, we found our answer is 1.542 times 10 power 7, here, which we used to substitute into the formula V is equal to F lambda, and when we made the lambda the subject of the formula, it gave us lambda is equal to V over F, which is 3 times 10 power 8, which is the velocity of light, all over the frequency that we got divided that gave us 19.455 which translated into 19.46 meters. Carrying on to the last example, an X-ray machine produces radiation of wavelength 1 times 10 to negative 11 meters. Calculate the frequency of radiation. So the solution we said that the wavelength is 1 times 10 or negative 11 meters 
However, remember that the velocity of x is the same as the velocity of light in air, so that's 3 times 10 power negative 8 meters per second, which leaves us with f equals to dash. So from the formula velocity, from the wave equation, velocity is equal to frequency multiplied by lambda, we get that frequency is equal to velocity all over lambda, which gives us the velocity was 3 times 10 power 8 divided by 1 times 10 power negative 11. So what happens is this. This one comes up, becomes a positive, so 3 divided by 1 is 3, so 3 times 10, 11 plus 8, that's 19, so 3 times 10, power 19, that's, that's the answer. So, for B, calculate its energy content. So, whenever you see this question asking you about energy, just remember the Planck's formula. Energy is equal to Planck's formula, the Planck's constant rather multiplied by the frequency. So energy is equal to 6.63 times 10 to 1 negative 34 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the power 19. We just keep that into our calculators. Let's see what's going to give us. So 6.63 times 10 power negative 34 multiplied by 3 times 10 power 19 which gives us 1.989 1.989 times 10 power negative 14 but then remember since it's energy it's joules and that's our final answer. So I don't know if you can notice the trend in these questions. First of all, they are testing me on the wave equation, the wave, the wave equation V is equals to F lambda, and then the E is equals to H F. So if you have a um, good background or good foundation on the wave equation, you can just add this into that and you'll be good to go. Okay. So with that said and done, I'd like you to try this on your own. Number four, number five, number six, A and B. And see what you've gotten out of this session. And tune in for the next session where we're going to begin by calculating this. And then you're going to mark for yourselves and see if you got what we taught. Or is there still some problems? Maybe you need to do a little bit of brushing up. So thank you for tuning in today and I hope you really enjoyed the class and remember as our country is facing this difficult time with this endemic on the news, kindly as students let's stand together and follow government directives. Always put on, put on a mask whenever you're going out in the public domain. Remember to sanitize or wash your hands at least. Let's say 20 times a day or before you come into contact, after coming into contact with surfaces, then ensure you keep social distance and let's help the less privileged in the society. You're out there, you've gotten this, your friend has not gotten this, can you be of assistance? Let's make the world a better place. Thank you.